Welcome to Symphony Workshop, I'm Gary Clark and this is part 5 of a multi-part tutorial in which I'm consuming a third party API using Symphony's HTTP client component and I'm driving out all functionality using test driven development. If you want to watch from the start there's a link at the top of the screen and in this one I'm going to add error handling and I'll also create a dev database and run the code I've created outside of the test environment. Before I do that some information first. I record in high resolution so you don't need to watch on a blurry screen. Choose high definition if that works for you. Would you like to join a growing group of PHP developers and take your skills to a new level? If that sounds like you, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon and welcome. I'll start off by running the tests. OK, that's working. Let's run and exclude our integration group. So exclude group integration. OK, good. So it's just run the two tests out of the three. And I think it's possible that on the majority of occasions I'm going to want to run the test minus the integration test. So let's make that the rule rather than the exception. I do that by adding an entry to the PHP unit XML file. So underneath this test suites element I'm going to add a new element called groups. Inside of that I need to add an exclude element. And then it's inside of that exclude element which I add my group which we are calling integration. And so now I can go back to my tests, I can run them without using the exclude group uh, integration and that works. If I do want to run the integration group, I just need to do this hyphen hyphen group and then the name of the group which is integration and doing that it will run it in isolation like so. Okay, so we have a happy path test where everything works and the world is wonderful. Now we need to start thinking about when things don't quite go to plan and we don't get a happy response back from the API. It's essential that we catch that and handle it because otherwise our application is going to continue to try and persist the stock with data that it won't be able to persist the stock with. Obviously this is going to throw exceptions in our own application. So let's create a new test and what we're going to test here is how to handle non-200 responses. Now I think we've got all the tools that we need in order to be able to fake a uh, non 200 response. So our setup is going to be fairly similar except we'll need to fake a different response status code and different response content. So I'm going to copy and paste these first few lines here. So same stuff there, application equals new application, command same again, command tester same again. I'm setting the status code to 500 and I think initially the route I'm going to go down is anything I get back which isn't a 200 response I'm going to intercept and add my own handling and my own error message to that from my uh, finance API client. So in this case we'll just say finance API client error. Executing the command is going to be exactly the same so I can copy that. I can also copy this line to get the repo. Here's a trick if you're using PHP Storm you can do shift command V or shift control V and that'll give you a list of things which you can choose and paste. I think it's the last 10 items that you copied. Now in the refresh stock profile command you'll see that we're returning this constant here, success, and it equates to zero and on failure it returns a one. So we can actually hook into that and assert that the process has failed and we're returning a one response. I can get that value as the return value of the command tester execute method. So I'll save that in a variable called command status. And so I'm asserting that command status equals one. Let's also assert that no records have been saved in the database, which shouldn't happen if we're exiting the command early. The way I'd like to do this is just by checking the value of a stock record count variable. So now we need to give that variable a value. And we can just use the query builder to do a count of the number of stock records in the database. So repo, create query builder. The string that I'm passing in here is stock. That's an alias. You can put anything. A lot of people will just use S, but I like to write things in full. And so by counting the number of stock IDs, I'm counting the number of rows in the stock table. And hopefully we should get zero back. So I need to call get query. And then just to get the single scalar result, I call get single scalar result. So it'll just be my integer value. It won't be wrapped in an array or anything like that. OK, let's run that test and see how we get on. So I'm going to filter and then run the test in isolation. 
So here we have an exception which has been thrown from our serializer and as we said we shouldn't actually be hitting the serializer we need to exit before that so refresh stop profile command line 65 and that's exactly where our serializer is so what's our shortest path back to green and i'm pretty sure i can do this with one line code by returning the failure constant from the command class so return command failure we shouldn't hit this and we should kill two birds with one stone run the tests and there we go and i'll also run all the tests so they're all passing. What I need to do is make sure that my real Yahoo Finance API client is matching what the fake is returning. So I'm going to set the content uh, or the JSON content to be exactly the same here. So in the Yahoo Finance API client and within the if conditional which checks the status code, I'm just going to return the same content. And for anything which is not a 200, I'm going to hijack that and change that to a 400. With those tests in place, I now want to give this a go in development mode. I want to go to my terminal and actually run a command. In order to do that, I'm first going to need a development database. And so I'm going to create one using Docker. It's entirely up to you what you use. If you want to use your local MySQL, Postgres or whatever, then do that. But I'm going to do it this way. If you're not familiar with Symfony's integration with Docker, then by all means, give it a go. Never pass up the opportunity to learn something new. You will need to create a docker compose yaml file in your project root like this and you can just copy these settings here you'll also need to create a postgres folder in the project root also and of course you'd need to have docker desktop installed on your host machine but if you've not used docker before and you find it quite daunting then just stick to what you know stick to your, your local database setup that you're already using okay with everything in place there i just need to run this command docker compose up dash d and this should build me a postgres 13 database in docker okay that's that done i'm going to run docker compose ps which will show me the status of that and i'll be able to grab the port number which i'll need if i'm going to connect to a database administration tool and so it's telling me that the port number is 55001 to do that now back to more familiar Symfony Doctrine territory. Let's make the migration with Symfony console make colon migration. And in our migrations folder, this is what we just created. Now, if you're using a different database, if you're not using Postgres, yours will look a little different than this. But if you are using Postgres, it should look fairly similar. Once you've given the migration file a quick inspection, it's time to migrate our database, which we can do with Symfony console doctrine colon migrations colon migrate. It'll ask you if you're sure. I'm just going to select yes. And then in my database admin tool, I can see it's created two tables. One is my migrations and the other one is an empty stock table, which looks exactly how I want it to. And now it's the moment of truth. So I'm going to copy the name of the command over to the terminal and it's symphony console i'll paste the name of the command and my two arguments were the symbol and the region which were amazon and us now something happened but we don't have feedback let's check our database tool refresh and there we go there's our record in the database but i wasn't happy with our lack of feedback in the terminal now in reality, this is going to be run on a cron. There won't be someone checking uh, the terminal. It's just an automated process which will run the background. However, just for a sanity check whilst we're in development, let's have some feedback in the terminal. And we can do that with this. So if you see the two interfaces which are being injected into the method there, what we'll get back is actually a stream output. And with that, we can call the right line method. So what we'll do there is just um, write out the string short name appended with has been saved. And then we also need to handle the failure. And for that, what we'll do is we'll just use uh, the failure content that we've got here. So we can grab that by saying stock profile get content. And that's better than nothing. Let's go over and run the command again and see what we get. So that's a big improvement already. Amazon has been saved. I refresh the database and there it is. So we're recording duplicates. Make a mental note. We need to change that. Let's try a different symbol. Let's try Tesla. Okay, Tesla has been saved. Refresh. And there you go. It's in our database also. Now I'm conscious that we've broken protocol there because we've actually wrote code before we've written a test for it. The good news is that this stuff is testable. So let's go back to our test and I'll show you how you do this. It's so simple. 
I've made a copy of the output string and I'm going to use the assert string contains string assertion. Paste that in and then we're comparing it against command tester get display. Okay, let's go and run this test in isolation. So filter, paste in the test name, run that. Okay, eight assertions, all green. That's happy path taken care of. Let's now deal with our non 200 test. And so I'm going to do the same uh, assertion again, assert string, contain string, but this time we're going to need this error string. And we'll go and paste that in. And we're making the assertion against the same value again, against command tester get display. Over to the terminal, let's run this in isolation. And we have a failure. So it's saying failed asserting that three matches expected zero. Let's have a look at our test again. And we're expecting a count of zero, but it's saying that we've got three. Let's go and look at our dev database. And as you can see, there's three records there. So something's gone wrong and you'll only actually have this error if you followed my Docker setup. When I prepend my test with the word Symfony, the local Symfony server is used and that detects that I have a Docker Compose running. Now mainly as consideration for people who ain't using Docker that are following this, I'll not turn this into a Docker lesson, but the short version is my database URL environment variable is now pointing to the database service in the Docker Compose file. So we need to remedy this. Because as it stands when our tests run, this database URL isn't being read from our env test file and this service is still being used instead. Let me run the test without using the Symfony binary and I'll show you what happens. So in that scenario, we are passing. I'll run it again with the Symfony and it's failing. Now I don't really want to switch between using those two methods because what if I want to add more services to my uh, Docker Compose file? It means that those won't work in tests. So what I'm going to do is in my test folder of my package folder inside of config, I'm going to create a test.trin.yaml file. I'm pasting in the entry from my regular doctrine uh, config file and I'm going to prepend the database URL environment variable with the word test underscore. When I run my test, my test.trin.yaml file is the one which overrides. So let's run the test again. It fails, but I'm pretty sure it should pass. When you change your environment variable files, always clear the cache because your environment variables get cached. So I'm going to clear the test cache and I can do that by specifying the test environment before I actually clear the cache. So it's Symfony console cache clear. That's cleared my test cache. Let's go and run the test again with our fingers crossed. And we're back to green. That's great. So let's run the full file. Okay, let's run all of the tests. And also let's run our integration test in isolation. So that passes and all is well in the world. I think we'll take one last pause there and in the final part I'll type a few loose ends. We need to update records rather than creating duplicates in the database and I want to log error responses from the API. As a little bonus, I'll also share some advice on how to bed in third-party APIs that you're using for the first time. So apologies for going off on a bit of a tangent if you've not been using Docker for your database, but I hope you've enjoyed this and found it useful all the same. If you have, be sure to give it a like and don't hesitate to share if you want to help others like yourself help each other out. And that's what this channel is all about. If you're on YouTube to keep showing you my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon. I release new material at least two times a week and details of my recordings can be found on the discussion tab of my YouTube channel homepage.